Welcome to Cartoon Crossroads Columbus or CXC 2021. Our four day celebration of cartoon art couldn't happen without our partner organizations to whom we are grateful. CXC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our annual festival, Free to the Public, relies on corporate and grant support, as well as individual donations. We are grateful for their support. Visit the Support CXC link on our website to find out how you can help us create meaningful connections between the people who make comics and those who read them. Cartoon Crossroads Columbus acknowledges that the ancient ancestors of the Eastern Woodlands tribes now referred to as the Adena and Hopo cultures inhabited the land we know as Ohio. Their descendants include the living nations of the Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, Delaware, and Seneca Cayuga. We honor and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this place where we gather. We hope you enjoy this event. Don't forget to visit our virtual expo at cartooncrossroadscolumbus.org and keep the conversation going in our Discord channel, which you can find at cartooncrossroadscolumbus.org slash Discord. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Kay Clopton. I'm the visiting professor of practice here at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce you all to Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith from Black Jose Press. Jamila is a writer and a publisher who founded Jet Black Jose Press. She's written several comics published by her own public publication, Black Jose Press, as well as for Radiator Comics, Power Magic Press, Short Box, and Jordan Brand, which is Nike. She also is the co-founder of the international meetup group Geek Girl Brunch. She was the creator of the hip hop and geek cultural project Straight Out of Gotham and the creator of the former blog Girl Gone Geek. Having created content in the geek community for over a decade, Jamila has featured in such publications as Essence, Ebony, CBR for Harriet, Complex, and Frontier. Robin Smith is a Jamaican cartoon is known for her mini comic, The Saddest, Angriest Black Girl in Town. She's the illustrator for DC Comics' Nubia a Real One, written by L.L. McKinney, and if you haven't read it, read it. Um, and Black Jesse Press's own wash day. She has an MFA from the Center for Cartoon Studies and has worked in comics for College Humor, Nike, and The Nib. Jamila and Robin have first com collaborated on the mini comic Wash Day, which won a Dinky Award for Best Floppy Comic. It was also named as one of the best comics of 2018 by the Comics Journal. Uh, they were also featured in Adweek's Creative 100 in 2021 as artists and authors to follow. Wash Day Diaries is slated to come out in May 2022 by Chronicle Books. They've also worked on Marisol, a um, webcomic for Jordan Brand, and through Jamili's Black Jose Press, Robin's The Saddest, Angriest Black Girl in Town was reprinted. If you're interested in learning more about their work in concert and individually after you've watched this fabulous video, please visit their websites, which will be in the description. So please join me in welcoming Jamili and Robin. Thank you for your willingness to come and speak with me today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited. <laughs> so the first question uh, will be to you, Jamila. Uh, what prompted you to want to start Black Jose Press? Um, it was kind of in the same like path as me wanting to create comics. So uh, when I had when I finally got the courage to be like, "Girl, you need to make comics. Like, stop ignoring that voice in your head." and the comics that I wanted to make, I didn't really see a lot of that in larger publishers. So I didn't even think to like reach out to publishers to publish the work I wanted to write. I saw folks on Kickstarter being able to kickstart their own comics um, and like indie publishers using Kickstarter as a way to fund the printing of comics. And so since I've kind of been in the game for a while, I was like, well, I have an audience, like I think I, you know, I'm skilled, I could do this. Plus, like, so part of it was I want to publish my own work, but I also really want more, like, I just want to help more amazing work by like black and brown women and non-binary folks exist in comics. So it was like, I want to read this selfishly and I need to publish my stuff. <laughs> so that's kind of what it was. Um, it was really inspired by Jose Manga, uh, as you can see in the title, it, which is, um, a genre of manga for like adult women. And I really wanted to see more comics uh, for like grown folks um, with like more mature situations and stuff, but like folks that look like my friends and talk like us. So that was the inspo. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's really cool, uh, especially that influence of Jose manga um, and wanted to see something for, you know, a more mature audience. It's there's not enough out there for us. So I do appreciate that you did this. Uh, just love your work. This is going to be me fangirling this entire interview, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the next question is actually for both of you. And uh, Jamila, you already started to really answer it is how did you get your start in comics? Um, as far as like starting to write comics or just like mm -hmm. reading comics in general? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> if we have like a the question for both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, the first one was Wash Day, my first like mini comic that I did with Robin. Uh, I work with Robin like forever, ever, man. Like this is just, <laughs> oh, honestly, as long as I won't get on her nerves, like I love working with Robin. But, um, but I think it was really, um, like Nana was a big influence for me mm -hmm. by Ayazawa and like a lot of other manga, like Jose creator, Jose manga creators, like really influenced my work. But um, it was, I just basically like re researched a lot because um, I didn't take any like formal courses for like comics writing or anything. So I just got a bunch of books about comics writing and um, looked at a lot of writer scripts, looked at a lot of comics that I liked and just try to figure it out. And then shout out to Jam, Jay Michaelina too. She's my first editor. And so she really helped me <laughs> a lot. And I love like working with editors. Um, so yeah, that kind of helped me get more into the, you know, comic script writing groove. Um, and then it was, I just didn't stop after that. <laughs> <laughs> um. I kind of, I've done art like for most of my life. Um, at first I was actually doing like portrait work um, for a while because my father's a portrait artist. So I was like, oh, I also want to do that. Um, and I still enjoy it a lot actually. Um, but I realized that I wanted to be able to like tell whole stories with like this like art, I don't know. Um, and then I hadn't really found comics until I was about like, 16 or 17, with the exception of Archie, because in my head at the time, Archie wasn't comics. I was like, oh, it's fun picture books that I find in the supermarket. Um, so it wasn't until like, I don't want to say later in my life, because I was like, I guess later in my teens that I was like, oh, here's like a way to tell stories with pictures. And um, then I found out about the Center for Cartoon Studies. And that's sort of how I got more into the comic scene rather than just fine art. So I'm really glad that I found that. Okay. Um, didn't expect to get a shout out for Archie. Um, grew up oh, reading that. So that it's was- It's gonna keep happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found my people. Anyway. <laughs> So I'll go into the next question. Um, and you've kind of already started answering this question as well. I love how this conversation is going. Uh, so it's kind of a two part question. So I'll start with the first part. What will you say were your early influences in comics? Uh, and the follow up is, are there specific artists or comics or manga that help shape your art and storytelling? You've already kind of alluded to that with Nana and Ayazawa and with the Archie, but were there any others that um, uh, were influential in um, um, the path you ended up taking. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because like when I started reading comics was in um, college, like for real, for real. Like I was like, all right, let me invest more time into reading this because I know this is something I'm gonna like a lot. <laughs> and it was harder for me to kind of jump into a lot of superhero comics because number one, like the issue number one, sometimes I wouldn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I kind of, um, like defaulted to reading a lot of Vertigo, like completed series and, and image. And so a lot of that stuff was already um, more mature and for adults. So I think that kind of helped like create my taste for wanting more adult like material in comics. And then thank, thank the Lord I found Jose Manga and I was like, this is it. Like, this is what I want to actually like create. Like I want this, but with black girls. Like I want this and my friends. <laughs> like, and so I think that's kind of when the light bulb went off for me. Um, but yeah, Ayazawa, like 
all praises due to her. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, Kyoko Okazaki, who's done Helter Skelter and Pink, is another big influence. Um, Kiriko Nananan, who's done Blue. Moyoko Ano, Erika Saka Urzawa, like especially the um, Yuri manga that she makes, like I live for it. Um, Inyo Asano is a huge influence in a way that like, you know, depression, anxiety, he, <laughs> he writes a lot about that. And so I really connected to a lot of that. I don't necessarily portray it in the same way as, as he does, but um but yeah, but with comics though, it's like, those are a lot of my influences when it comes to comics, but musicians like are a big influences to how I think about, like how I want to tell stories. Like I think of like Missy and Solange and um, like Frank Ocean and Tyler and Outkast, kind of just like really great, like storytellers, like not afraid to try different things. Um, so yeah, it's like, I always kind of have music as like an influence in my for my like writing as well. That's wild because <laughs> what music? <laughs> I haven't written down here. I'm like, oh, are we going to talk about music at all? So I'm glad that you brought it up, Jamila, because <laughs> I watch music videos nonstop while I'm doing work. Like, I think. I mean, I don't think what I'm about to say really makes sense, but I think a music video is sort of like the mini comic version mm -hmm. of film. <laughs> like, I think a music video like tells you something real quick in a short amount of time, like, and it's super interesting and it, they need to capture as much of your attention and tell a story as quickly as possible, particularly in a, you know, just, that's why I say mini comic, because I guess there is the graphic novel, <laughs> um, which is the movie. But um, I love music videos too. I love like the way that Kendrick Lamar's music videos like tell stories, especially like his latest music video is literally like um, for Family Ties. It's just, is that the right song? Um, it's just like layers of video going over each other. And it kind of reminds me of comic panels. Um, so glad I could throw that in there today. Yeah. Um, and of course, Lil Nas X just came out with like Montero and there's literally just a small like video for every song. Anyways, I feel like I'm getting off topic of comics, even though again, super big influence is music videos and like the way that all these artists choose to tell stories in a very like hyper visual medium, even though they're selling a song. Um, for, in terms of comics, Archie comics are my biggest influence. They're the only comics I read growing up. I grew up in Jamaica. They were the only comics that were really around. They were in supermarkets, the little digests. And I just thought they were like the cutest group of friends who would just hang out. And it's sort of just, just it's sort of sitcom -y, you know, where it's just a formula where, oh, here's a, a very small conflict. And then it, it gets resolved at the end. And that those are the kinds of like stories I really enjoy taking in. Um, so, you know, quick, cute group of friends who all get along and sometimes have a little whatever. Um, but like favorite, like cartoonists specifically who have been like super big influences on me. Um, Sofiano's work like is actually some of the first autobio work I ever saw. Um, I think her work is incredible and it kind of really showed me that, you know, my comics didn't have, even though I enjoy Archie comics, like I don't want to make them, you know? So knowing that there is someone out there telling stories in a way that I was like, oh, this is kind of what I want to do. Um, and I actually was introduced to her work when I had just gotten to the Center for Cartoon Studies. So I feel like that was a real like clicking moment um, in terms of my like comics process. There's also like Harry Lucy, who does Archie comics. Um, there's Ryan Heshka, whose work I really love, Eleanor Davis, uh, Kim, Kim Dong Hua. And Kyle Baker's Nat Turner is like super big influence. So yeah. Wow, this is this is turning out to be an even better conversation than I could have ever imagined, especially with all the um, musical influences and because um, I did my dissertation studying sound effects in comics. So this is like the coolest thing for me right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, thinking about mini comics is like um, the like music videos is the mini comic version of a film and the graphic novel being the movie. That's just 
it's like it's so mind blowing just because it makes sense, or at least it makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me. Uh, I'm, glad it, I'm glad it makes sense to you. It does. <laughs> so we already talked about the comics that you grew up reading. So we'll move on. Uh, actually, we also talked about favorite artists. Uh, um, well, did you name all your favorite artists? Because you named all the people who are influencing you. Um, do you have any comic artists that are your absolute favorites? Oh God! And this is for both of you. There's so many people. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, there's so many folks. Um, but I guess like some of the ones that are more top of mind, I definitely yeah did not name them all. I'll, you know, come over to non-manga creators. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we got one on the panel right now, Robin Smith. <laughs> I stan. Uh, I like, I love Robin's work. Like, she's so amazing. I am so grateful to work with her. Everybody I've worked with, period like is fantastic like buttercup um sam wade trinidad escobar um savvy borno like they're just i yeah it, i'm just grateful to be able to create comics with them um mariko tamaki is a big influence for me as a writer um because yeah i just love her work and it's stories that i really want to see more of in comics so, uh, but there's also like, I love Melly Mendoza's Skip, which I actually just like finished reading yesterday and it was an experience. <laughs> um, Rosemary O'Connell art is super beautiful. Um, I like Freddie Carrasco too. Um, so that's, I'll stop, but there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> um. Well, I'm super excited for um, Olivia Stevens, who just put out RD and the Wolf Moon. So good. I was just at their um, like comics reading. And speaking of sound effects, like they had the sound effects sort of going as they were reading. So you'd hear like the wolf growl instead of like just looking at the image. And like, it was it was so immersive. I actually I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that. You'd hear the dip like the school bell, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna just leave it there. I want everyone to be thinking about Olivia Steve. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that one up because that's just. I just love the immersiveness of sounds, and especially with manga and how uh, it's so involved, um, mm. um, which is usually what I write about. Um, but just. To, to realize that people actually added to the performative nature of even doing readings, that it's not just window dressing, that it is an integral part of the comics experience. And it doesn't always have to be there, but when it's there, it's usually something special. So that's so cool. Uh, I am so not professional. Anyway, um, we'll go on to the next question. Um, this is, how did you two come together for your first collaboration for Wash Day? So I, um, I don't even, I wish I could like find who retweeted Robin's art because that's um, how I saw her work at first was um, <laughs> somebody retweeted her art and it was this like dope uh, black girl and it said like fit in a punch of Nazi and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was working on the script at the time and I like knew I wanted it to be a black and white. So I was looking for like, black women who could draw hair really well and you know whatever whose styles I really like like all that kind of stuff so I was like it was very top of mind and I saw that and I was like oh my god went to the site oh my god red sad is angry as oh my like I just started like standing slowly and I'm like all right let me finish <laughs> the script <laughs> and then I will hit her up and um Thankfully, she said yes. Here we are. <laughs> Besties I mean, now. I, like... I know. Oh my God, I felt like so. I mean, I so I literally had just graduated, and I, you know, they kind of were just like, "Well, go work now." Um, and I just remember, like, "Oh my God, what am I? What am I gonna do?" And of the like one picture that I put up on. I had like just gotten a Twitter like two months before because my friends bullied me into it. Oh my God, thank God. <laughs> so I started posting some stuff and then that one, I'm not going to say it did numbers because it didn't. I think it got like 
70 retweets, which is great for me at the time, you know. And then I saw that Jamila started following me, and I was like, who is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> And uh, uh, I was like, wow, so cool. And I really thought that was the, I mean, I just thought that was the end of it. And then like, um, <laughs> then Jimmy like bought everything in my store. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is cool. Again, I thought that was the end of it. And then I was like, I, I worked at, I worked at the deli at the co-op in the town. I'm actually back in the town, which is why it's, it's kind of weird talking about it, but whatever. So I work, I was working at the deli and I remember I got the email like while I was closing up for like, oh, you know, I have this like idea for the script and I, I still have it saved. I'm just like, oh my God. And I remember I was with one of my coworkers and who I liked. I didn't like anyone else. And I like showed him and he was like, oh my, my God. So it was like, and we were like jumping up and down in the deli, which was fun. Oh so. My God. And then I mean I just I don't know I feel very lucky to have found someone that I love collaborating with and is also my friend now so I feel like that's rare and then for me to like find Jamila on that first like oh job I think it was it was in the stars <laughs> yeah yeah I think for sure like this like journey like Watch Day is my first comic and like we're still and Watch Day Diary is going to be my first graphic novel and I'm still doing this with Robin and like we created such a great friendship like and I love working with her and I love her art so I could just like like talk to Robin all the time like this is the best like it's <laughs> so great. Yeah, I feel like we're always trying to tell the same story which mm -hmm. is why mm -hmm. it, and from I mean that's been the case from the beginning which I think is why um we got along so well, especially mm -hmm. because hair is my favorite thing to draw. So if it was a book about hair, <laughs> then <laughs> like you're gonna draw a I lot said, of it. <laughs> right. I think I said yes before you explained anything else. I was just like, yeah. And you're like, wait, wait, let me send you the script. But I was already like, Why read it first, please. <laughs> It might be trash. Like, I don't know. But, but then it turned out to be great. So I was like, oh, thank God. So. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, that, that is the greatest story. I just, I love that you have such a great relationship, not just a working relationship, but a friendship. And it's just, and you're doing such great things. I mean, for someone who's only recently gone with natural hair, that wash day was extremely important. Um because I still have no idea what I'm doing, but that was that was like the start of my journey. So it's like, this is so wonderful. And I just love that you love working together. So this, oh, I'm just, I'm in my feelings right now. I just. Well, yeah. We're just always so in our feelings. So it's, don't worry. Always. That's the kind of energy we carry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to switch gears for a brief moment. And this is for Robin. I read Nubia Real One, and I absolutely loved it. So how did you get involved in this project? Um, I, I, guess, I guess social media really helped me out in my career. Um, I saw that one, an editor for DC Comics, Sarah Miller, had started following me. And I was like, oh, my God. Now I can only post like good things. Um, and then like a few months later, I got an email from her. She actually like, I'm, I'm kind of like shocked at how it went down because apparently, so my email wasn't anywhere except in my store and you would have to ask a question through my store. And that's how she contacted me, which was extremely embarrassing. I was like, oh my God, I don't have my email anywhere. What if she had just like, just given up and been like, okay, well that was too hard. Let me just hire somebody. Like hire someone else. And I mean, it was really just uh, like a request to try out for the job. So, you know, then I had to like send in sketches of Nubia. And of course I was like big hair cause I'm gonna draw here. Um, and from there, I mean, I had to go through different rounds of like, so I sent in a sketch of Nubia and then they were like, oh, also like, let's see her her friend group, like what would they look like? Cause I got really no description of what they looked like. It was more their personalities. Um, and character design is one of my favorite things to do. 
So I was like, okay, this is this is the fun part. And um, then I had to do two um, like test pages from a script that Elle had done. And I mean, once I got the script, I was like, oh, this is this is great. I'm so glad that it's just again, it's just a group of friends who get along and are nice to each other. That that's not like bread and butter. I love that. <laughs> um, so you know, then I. It took like maybe one or two months to hear that I got the job. And I was with my mom. A lot, oh, I'm always jumping, I guess. So we like jumped up and down when we heard that I had gotten the job. And because when I was 16, I mean, it, I really loved um, superheroes, not necessarily superhero comics for the same reason that Jimmy Lola like, couldn't get into it. I couldn't either. It was just so inaccessible. Um, I just could I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read all of Thor because I really loved Thor at the time. And I just couldn't, I couldn't find it, number one. I would always be like, okay, well, there, this exists, but then there's more that maybe I should have known. I don't know. So it would confuse me. And I mean, eventually I like kind of read some of the newer comics that kind of restarted his, his lore or whatever. But I was like, oh, let me make my own superheroes, which is actually what I started when I was like in undergrad. And they were all black women of Caribbean descent. <laughs> um, so hopefully I'll someday revisit that, uh, but not right now. Uh, but, um, so then like hearing about Nubia and, you know, she's a black woman, she's a superhero. Like there isn't that much about her that's really been around. And um, it was just such, an incredible opportunity i like i worked so hard on those pages i still think they're some of the best comic pages i've ever drawn <laughs> just those two not even the whole book i'm <laughs> just like those two tr try out like trial pages that i had to do i'm like yeah these are good <laughs> um i tricked them but no not <laughs> That's kind of how it felt too when Jamila like saw my um, drawing on in, on um, Twitter. I was like, "Oh no, I tricked Jamila!" <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it happened. Just like again, social media kind of coming together for me in a way that I'm like, "Wow, this is exactly something I would like doing." Well, as a person who grew up as a Wonder Woman fan and learning of Nubia and actually. Um, finding out that this was coming out, I grabbed it as soon as it was out there, sat down and read it, made my husband read it. My husband will not read a comic book. He actually read the whole thing, which blew me away because oh he will God. not read anything um, that I give him. And so <laughs> it was, you You do beautiful work. So uh, anytime you don't think you do, watch this video because uh, <laughs> we've been telling you, you do great work. So just anytime you need that affirmation, just pull this back up. Uh, <laughs> So let's see, um, do you know if there's going to be a sequel to that graphic novel? And if, are, if there is, are you going to be involved? Because you should be. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm going to just say I hope for both those things. I don't, I really don't know. Um, it, I know that it was pitched as a one shot sort of thing, but I feel like Elle did a really good job of setting it up for more story. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, fingers crossed, and also <laughs> fingers crossed that I get to draw it. <laughs> yeah, if I have anything to say about it, which of course I have like no influence whatsoever, <laughs> you will be drawing it. If I could get my 13 year old to read this, that you need to do this. Again, my child won't read anything. So <laughs> if I can get them to read this, <laughs> and then we'll build up from there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's um, that was great work. So thank you just, so much. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I think we mentioned this before, but um, there are a lot of viewers who may not know what Jose Manga is. So uh, if um, Jamila, you could tell us more about it, because uh, I know, I understand how it influenced you, but you may want to explain to the audience who is unfamiliar with the with that genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could talk about Jose Manga all day. Like, they do not pay me. Like, <laughs> I'm just like going around preaching the gospel but um because I want more work translated because there's not enough so yeah it is there's like shoujo shonen which is like girls and boys you know you have your sailor moon your naruto and stuff like that and then there's jose 
um, and semen. And so that's adult women and men or like older teens, that kind of stuff. So the topics will be more mature. There'll be sex in there, nudity. It just seems like I just wanted to see naked people, but it's like the topics <laughs> are, it's, it's not only it, but the topics are more mature. Uh, the stuff, relationship issues with like friendships and, um, you know, romantic relationships are, um, there's something that I really related to when I was reading it at the time. And it was like such a breath of fresh air um, because I really love comics. And that was the kind of story. Those are the kind of stories that I, I loved. Like, I love stuff about friendships. I, I love a love triangle, like, but now it's just like grown women going through this. So it felt like there were more risks. And um, like, I love shoujo too, though. Like, you know, like, oh my God, he touched her hands and I'm like dying over here. But like, <laughs> like it's, I need those extremes. And I, I really felt a lack of Jose, especially because there's not a ton I felt like that in, I don't know, English western comics or whatever so that kind of helped me feel more comfortable with um like wanting to I realized like these are the stories that I want to tell it kind of like I just started having these stories come out of me and I think it was because I really didn't see it in that medium before in the with like black women and stuff so it was hard for me to be like oh I want to do that because I wasn't seeing that too much so then I realized like girl you just gotta do it like We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you mentioned Sailor Moon, I'm actually wearing my Sailor uh, Jupiter necklace. Because nice. um, I can't find a Sailor Pluto one. That's Sailor Pluto is my heart. So I couldn't <laughs> find that one. But it was also an excuse to bring up the fact that you were African Sailor Moon. And I love that. I was. Like, oh, I'm so jealous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cosplay days. <laughs> yeah, I admit, that's not a question, but I wanted to say it. So we're. <laughs> <get down. laughs> so we're going to go back to. Um, um, to the work you guys are doing, especially with the saddest, angriest black girl uh, in town. Uh, I understand that the Kickstarter is a reprint, and I have it right here. I have my copy uh, with a beautiful watercolor cover. And I was hoping you could tell the viewers more about what inspired the work and uh, what made you want to republish it. Um, so um, the way that it actually came to be was so sorry it's because I'm, I'm back in the town now that it's like based on so it's like a little distracting a little bit because I'm like hearing the sounds of the town um so it, it spoiler alert it's about a specific town um White River Junction Vermont because that's where the Center for Cartoon Studies is and after our, so at the end of your first year here, you do something called a mini thesis. Um, I think they renamed, renamed it now, like first year project or something. Um, but I've known it as the mini thesis because then you do your second year and you do your thesis. Um, and it was just a really hard year of being the only like black person in town. Um, I think there may have been like one or two more folks around, but um, we just all never saw each other. So I, I don't know. Um, I just kind of took the opportunity to, I was actually writing every day, which is something I do like all the time, actually. I like keep lots of journals. I have so many filled journals of just my feelings. Uh, um, so I kept a journal literally while I was in classes, just because, you know, like, things would slip from people's mouths and I'm like, what, what is happening here? Or, you know, I, I'm tired of being stared on on the street, like stared at on the street just cause, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, I don't think anyone is maliciously looking at me, but you know, you stand out. You're the, like people know who I am just because I am one of maybe three, I'm one of one, you know, um, black people in town and, after like putting, like writing all these things down, I realized that I'm kind of just suffering in silence. I'm not really talking about it, but I don't talk about it because I just don't think anyone around would believe me because no one else is experiencing that. So I decided, like, I think it's the only comic that I've made specifically just to 
inform 12 people this is how I'm feeling don't talk to me about it because I will have nothing to say it's just here's my mini thesis here is everything I've been feeling if you don't want to believe me that's fine I guess I've made a cool book out of it so now you have that congrats um, and that's kind of how it came to be um, it it blew up way more than I was expecting only because a lot more people have experienced that and you know, in a way that sort of worked, helped me work through it because I was like, okay, I'm not alone. Like lots of people have experienced this, whether or not they've been one of the only black people in their town, like, you know, just being anywhere you can feel that sort of like being othered by, you know, where you are, especially being like a black girl. Um, so that's kind of how it came to be. I kept reprinting it by, I, so it's all printed by hand and I put together by hand. Like I did it all myself. It has a vellum cover, then it would have like its regular cover, then there's the guts. And then, you know, it, it took, it just took so much effort because as it got more popular, like more people wanted to have it, which was great. Um, Cause I would get money. <laughs> um, but after a while, it was just really hard to, put it together. So I was like, I'm retiring this. And then Jamila was like, no. <laughs> so I'll let Jamila talk about revolution. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful to her for it because I, I really was just too tired to do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't happening on my watch. I'm like, no, this is <laughs> an amazing comic. Like it, I love it. Um, it, it's like such beautiful writing um, and I was like, no, more people need to see this. Like, we can't, we can't stop this. I got Black Chelsea Press, like, we doing this, <laughs> like, like, period. And that was kind of it. It wasn't too much to think about, really. I'm like, nah, nah, girl, <laughs> we gonna figure something out. So, yeah, I, it's, and it, like, fits perfectly with, like, what, like, kind of stories, um, I want Black Chelsea Press to be putting out and stuff and, and amplifying, so, um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful work. I just want more people to see it. Oh, definitely. It's, um, the, the part that hit me the hardest was I don't want to be the angry black girl, but mm -hmm. I am the angry black girl. It's like, that's, that's, that feels like that was my whole life. Just, yeah. just constantly angry and just seeing that in front. It's like, I get it. I see it. I'm not the only one. <laughs> And so it, it it actually is a great way to move to the, my next question. It's just actually, what do either of you think is the power of comics? Big that's question really time. Question. Oh yeah, no, I mean that's a really good question. Only because now I'm thinking specifically about like I've read comics that are about things I've gone through, just so I don't feel alone, you know. And I enjoy making comics that have that same effect. Um, and in terms of like representation I feel like it's something I talk about all the time because and I'm sure Jamila gets these questions all the time too because being a black woman in comics they're like oh is representation important and you're just like what is this Obviously. question yeah like what am, what am I supposed to say no um so I mean there is a whole lot of nuance to that sort of like representation question but what I mean specifically by talking about it now is just like I love taking the time to like sit through and think about character design like I was talking about and just put each one of my friends or family in a book because they've gone their whole lives without seeing like themselves in a comic. Not that they are asking me for that because they don't necessarily read comics, but you know, <laughs> they kind of read it now for it because you know, they're kind of in it. So that's fun. Um, but also on a broader spectrum of like thinking about all people who I want to read my comics, I think um, exclusively about Black people and how I want them to read my comics and be in my comics because I care a lot. Again, growing up in Jamaica, like there's Black people everywhere. So that was my reality for like more than half of my life. Um, so depicting that in a comic seems simple enough to me. I'm like, yeah, that's... I don't have an agenda here. <laughs> I mean, if you want to think that, sure, go ahead. That sounds kind of fun. Um, it's more just about like the the power of comics being like representing my world, you know, and then other people also live in that world, you know, it's not just 
um, my perspective. I'm not just like, oh, I'm imagining all these black people hanging out together. That's not, it happens. And I feel like not enough people even realize that there are, that they are not the center of everything. And um, I guess I'm saying people, I mean like white people. <laughs> but, um, I guess, yeah, I'm just thinking a lot about how American television has warped um, a lot of Jamaica's idea of stories and how to tell stories. Like growing up, you know, I thought this is how you tell a successful story. It has a group of friends, literally the show Friends, um, which is an extremely popular show in Jamaica. I mean, for good reason, I like it, whatever. But again, it's sort of like, this is what a show entails. Like me reading Archie, I was like, this is what a comic book entails. I can't do this because what I do isn't this. So it's not a comic. Um, I've been rambling, but sort of um, that's how I think about comics. And that's how I think about like the comics I read and also the comics I make. Dang, that was, that was great. How do I follow that up? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I love comics. Like I love the medium of comics and I love art and stories and it is both of those things um, simply like, I think it's the power of having like a visual story of, you know, having a comic, having art and a story come together is just can like be very impactful for folks, obviously, like just like reading a book and stuff. But I just love comics because like, I love art too. Um, and so for me, like, I mean, it's the same as Robin. Like, honestly, everybody knows black women, non -binary, black non binary folks, black and brown folks, like, that's what I care about creating stories for. But, like, more specifically, I like to, um, I feel like we need more stories where it is not written by people of color for white people, but just like by people of color talking to, you know, their own community. Um, Cause you can tell when it's kind of written for like mm -hmm. white folks and the white gays. And I don't, not G-A-Y, <laughs> <laughs> like I gays. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I, I just kind of want more of a space for us to be able to be on our FUBU, like, I don't know if I can curse, our FUBU stuff and, you know, for us, by us. And like, I want, to read comics like Insecure and like Girlfriends or like uh, um, Living Single. Like I want those to exist too and not just the ones where everybody looks like friends because I don't think there's like any black people in that show. So um, yeah, that's the power. I mean, and then it's also, you seeing yourself in it makes you feel like, oh, I'm a part of this. I can see myself creating this. I can see myself being a creator in comics. And I just want more folks to at least see themselves to feel like they have the option versus, you know, not seeing themselves at all and thinking like, well, that's just not for me. I don't, there's no space for me there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that actually leads to um, my next question, which is, what would your advice be for anyone who's thinking about getting into comics, especially people who look like us? What is your advice? Um, I would say don't wait to like look for a specific sign or see something that tells you like, don't wait for permission or something that tells you like now is the right time, like, or something similar to what you're trying to do. Just create like what you want to create, even if it's very niche and you're like, I don't know if I'll find my audience. Like if that's like the story you want to tell us, your truth, that's what you love, like stick to it. Um, and you, people will, it'll, people will come, like it, it'll <laughs> happen. Um, and the other thing I would say, the practical thing is starting small, um, do a short comic. Don't be, don't be doing the most, like <laughs> start small. It's more affordable. You can do it faster. And um, yeah, it's, yeah, you can finish like, <laughs> so that's my, my advice. That, that was literally what I was about to say. I was like, 
start small. Um, oh, Jack, I took that. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I, I agree with everything that Jamila said, um, especially like not waiting for a sign. I feel like that's definitely, I feel like I just got that advice from you listening because um, I always look for a sign. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always like, oh, if I'm meant to do this, then something will tell me I'm meant to do this. You are um, the sign. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to write that down. Um, <laughs> but also starting small, I think, is the best thing you could do to get into like comics or to even convince yourself that you mm -hmm. are in comics or that you are a comics creator. Um, I feel like it's taken such a long time still for me to even convince myself like this is what I do. I make comics and I enjoy it. And when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a cartoonist and that I make comics. Like there is still part of me that's like, oh, have I done enough? Um, mm -hmm. But the truth is that the minute that I made the saddest things about girl in town, super mini just for 12 people, like I was doing comics and the fact that I was even able to put something out, even though it was an assignment, like, that I feel like that's definitely something that's really good about the program that I did was they tell you like start small um they force you almost to start small and I think that is how I've gotten to this point is by um approaching just the tiniest story maybe that I want to tell or just getting one feeling across and then from there it's it's sort of like you have to train mm -hmm. to get like to run the marathon, like you have to do, like you have to jog first. And um, I know that sounds super cliche, but I mean, I definitely recommend that. That is some great advice. Um, I'll have to keep that in mind. Never done a comic, wanted to, never did it. Might have to at this point. Let's go. <laughs> Do it. Don't Let's look for go. a sign. <laughs> you, are you, the sign. Are, you are the sign. <laughs> that is our mantra. <laughs> All right. And we have two questions left. So this will work. Um, so what are your future plans and projects going for for, uh, for you two together as well as individually and for Black Jose Press? I guess I could start. I got mad stuff going on. Um, <laughs> so together, Watch Day Diaries comes out next year. Woo -woo! So be on the lookout for whenever we're able to share pre-orders. And I can't wait for people to see the cover of the book because it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. It makes me want to scream. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, that would be really cool. And... Yeah, you know, if you want to get status anchors, black girl, come over to Black Chelsea Press. Um, what else are we? I don't know if, what else we're doing. There, I have some things that I want to work on with Robin. She already knows. So, like, I just got to get my my scripts together. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, I'm also um, I have a new comic, Ode to Keisha, which Yay! is out now um, for pre order. So it is. Uh, my first auto bio that I did with Trinidad Escobar, who I'm also publishing a collection of her erotic comics um, next year called Arrive in My Hands. And so, this, yeah, this is my first auto bio um, when I was in kindergarten in the Netherlands. We're on theme here. Only black girl in class <laughs> got a black friend and it changed my life. So, you know, that, that's, that's a simple blurb. But um yeah, so that that's the new um, the new joint, and there's some other stuff that I'm working on that I have not yet to announce, but I am working to publish stuff from other folks as well. So just you know, follow me, subscribe to my newsletter, stay tuned. I'm out here. Oh, also, I am the new comics consultant for Kickstarter, comics outreach consultant for Kickstarter. So if you are trying to kickstart your comic or have questions or advice hit me up and yeah. <laughs> um, I am working on Wash Day Diaries, which is coming out next year. I'm very excited. I really hope that we get to show the cover soon because I'm very proud of it. Um, <laughs> I guess right now that is the only thing that I'm working on. <laughs> and, Hopefully in the future, I am working more with Jamila 
Um, I don't think I have to hope. I think I can already see it. And um, my own stuff too. I, I guess I like have things written down and that I've been meaning to work on for a while now. So um, the reason I'm actually back in town is that I'm the new fellow for the Center for Cartoon Studies this year. Um, yes. So I have time to kind of relax and do my own work after I finish Watch Day Diaries. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so is there anything that you want to tell the audience? This is your uh, chance to say whatever you want for the next like few minutes or so. So <laughs> that's so much power. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I feel like more advice I want to give is like, be open to collaboration. I definitely, um, before working with Jamila, I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, what if it, we have like a difference of opinions on things? You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that that will not happen because there are definitely people that we've collaborated with that um, things just didn't go so great. But I would definitely say like, once you find your, your Jamila, hold on. Oh my God, I can't. You're gonna make me cry. Stop. Oh um, my God. Yeah, no, I just, you know, I feel like there is something that seems really heroic about doing everything by yourself and like yeah. writing your own things and drawing your own things and then coloring your own things. And it's just like, it's so exhausting. It can really take a lot out of you. And then you would have, you have your like perfect product at the end that you've done all by yourself. But, you know, not to say that that's not something you should do, but at least pace yourself for sure for something like that. And be open to not only collaboration, but I guess also help, emotional help. I feel like Jamila also helps me a lot with that. I got you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I guess even if it's just advice for me when I'm like watching this later, it's sort of like, you don't have to do these things alone. Um, and yeah. I am mad emotional right now, but I'm not going to cry. <laughs> um, to add to that, because I completely, I mean, I'm a writer, so I got to, like, <laughs> I, got, I got a choice. I mean, I could draw my own, but I don't think I'd be here right now if I did. So um, I would say, like, in addition to that is, uh, you know, comics, just like most of society, there's plenty of toxic areas um, and um, the industry can be real trash. And so I would say in addition to not feeling like you have to create comics by yourself, like make sure you don't have to go through this, you know, journey on your own. Like when you find um, folks you really connect with really well in comics, like, you know, keep that community to you close because there's always something that's going to go down in comics that will, especially if you're any sort of marginalized person, like it's happening every 10 minutes. Um, it's always, it's always happening. So just having like a community that you can talk to, that you can hit up um, when, you know, you're having trouble writing or you're having trouble with this racist thing that happens on Twitter. Um, it will keep you sane and in the game. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it'd be really lonely if, if you didn't have that. Well, thank you so very much, both of you for speaking with me today. Um, this is Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith. Um, you can check out their websites. You can also go to Black Joe State Press. I encourage you to order what you don't already have. Uh, get in on a pre-order. I'm gonna be pre-ordering some stuff as soon as possible. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and, um, I don't know how to finish this, so this is, I guess we're done. Thank you. <laughs>